Welcome to The Rich Report, a podcast with news and information on high-performance computing. Today, my guest is Justin Borgman. Justin is CEO of a brand new company called Hadapt. Welcome, Justin. Thank you, Rich. Uh, we really appreciate being here. Uh, thank you for taking the time. So I understand you have an announcement about a new company and uh, some slides for us. Absolutely. Uh, thanks for having us, Rich. Uh, I'm, I'm here to announce uh, the um, launch of a, of a new startup in the big data space called Hadapt, which is really the adaptive analytical platform for big data. And uh, to give you a little background, it was uh, commercialized off of research in the Yale Computer Science Department by professors Daniel Abadi and Avi Silvershots and their two PhD students, uh, Aza Abouzid and Camille Baida Pavlikovsky, uh, who had come up with this new uh, hybrid database architecture, really combining the, the benefits of Hadoop with relational databases. Um, and, and we've spent the, the past year uh, working on uh, commercializing that te technology, um, creating a, a relationship with Yale so that we now uh, own the rights to that intellectual property uh, and have just completed an initial round of fin uh, financing to build out a first version of the product. Uh, so we're excited to get started. Uh, some of the key drivers behind the reason why we started this company uh, are a couple of trends that we think are converging here in an interesting way. Um, the first is, of course, big data, which you probably know plenty about, which is this idea that data is continuing to grow. And a lot of it is machine generated, which is really accelerating that growth of data. In fact, uh, estimates are that data is growing at about 10x every five years. Um, in addition to that, customers are wanting to perform increasingly complex analytics on that raw data rather than summarized sets of that data. Uh, and people are finding increased value in both structured and unstructured parts of that data, where, whereas today you really have to deal with those in sort of two different siloed uh, environments. Uh, we're building a, a hybrid solution that works with both, and I'll get into more detail on that. The other important trend here is really the emergence of cloud computing as an alternative uh, to enterprise IT infrastructure and, and leveraging the economic benefits that virtualized environments provide, whether they're public or private clouds. Uh, but it it also creates unique challenges that uh, current parallel database environments aren't built to handle. And that's particularly around the idea of these dramatic performance fluctuations in node performance in a virtualized environment. Because it is running on shared hardware, and you can't really predict uh, necessarily how these nodes uh, will perform. So if we go to the next slide, uh, you know, these three areas, really a desire to perform long and complex analytics across big data, uh, and a desire to work with structured and unstructured data, and a desire to use cloud computing uh, or virtualized environments uh, to uh, really deliver that analytics uh, has created this need for a more adaptive analytical platform. Uh, and that's really what we've built. Uh, so on the next slide, uh, you know, essentially, uh, Adapt was really born in the cloud. All of our development, all of our testing has been done on uh, on public clouds, uh, and so we've, we've used that paradigm as a way to think about the entire architecture of our system. And we think that's an important differentiation from some of the other uh, database vendors out there that have cloud additions. But in those cloud additions, um, they're, they're still the same as, as the, the non-cloud additions in the sense that they, they plan out the entire query in advance. And what that means is that if you're, you're planning out the entire query, you can't predict uh, spontaneous changes in node performance. So you end up planning out this query, and all of a sudden, one node starts to run dramatically slower than the rest because it's a virtualized environment, and crazy stuff happens in the cloud. And, and what happens is then you end up going as slow as the slowest node. You're waiting for that particular node to finish that part of the query, uh, and that ends up becoming a, a bottleneck for the overall query. Um, so what we've done is we've built something that we call adaptive query execution. And this is really a property we're inheriting from Hadoop, which is the idea of uh, balancing uh, the load by um, dynamically sensing that, okay, one node is running slow, uh, so we can shift that workload to another node that is running fast. Uh, and within a, a Hadapt cluster, all of the data is replicated three times, just like Hadoop. And so again, if one node starts to, to slow down, let's say node three starts to slow down dramatically for, for no good, you know, predictable reason, we can shift that workload to node 12, which also has a copy of that data, and continue that workload on the fly in the middle of the query. So there's no slowdowns in performance. This provides better performance in a cloud environment and more predictable performance, consistent performance uh, in the cloud. 
And then the second element of this adaptive query execution is the idea of fault tolerance. So uh, not only do nodes uh, slow down dramatically in virtualized environments, sometimes they just die. And this is in both virtualized environments and dedicated hardware. Um, and uh, again, Hadapt has the ability to recognize that a node has failed and continue that query um, uh, on the fly by shifting that workload to uh, another uh, node that has the same copy of that data. So, so you end up being able to continue your queries without any slowdown in performance at all. Uh, and that's another unique property of, of Hadapt that is inherited from the Hadoop uh, uh, system. <clears throat> so in the next slide, slide six, uh, what I'm talking about here is, is another important innovation, I think, which is the idea of really incorporating Hadoop and relational database systems in one uh, cohesive, tightly integrated system. So today, uh, you'll, you'll find um, uh, vendors offering things uh, that they'll call a Hadoop connector, uh, which is basically a way of moving data back and forth between a Hadoop cluster and uh, a parallel database cluster, uh, or even an appliance. Uh, and the way, uh, the, the, the mechanism for doing that um, you know, allows them to move data back and forth, but it's, it's very slow. It's a little bit cumbersome. Uh, it increases uh, the need for two systems and twice the, the sort of expertise in using these two different uh, systems. Uh, and it's, it's sort of an inefficient way, we think, of, of trying to perform analytics across both structured and unstructured data. Because if you remember, Hadoop really excels at unstructured data, and relational databases really excel with structured data. So we've built this, this hybrid approach, again, that allows you to run queries across both sets of data, all within one platform. And I'll explain a little bit about how that works on, on the next slide. So on slide seven, uh, you'll see that this adaptive analytical platform that we've created uh, begins with Hadoop, and we use Hadoop just the way it is. So all, all the properties that you're, you're used to with Hadoop, uh, you can continue to do. So you can run MapReduce jobs. Uh, you can store data in uh, HDFS, your unstructured data, uh, and do all the, the great things that Hadoop allows you to do. But at the same time, we've built a, a robust SQL interface, which we'll be able to tie into business intelligence tools and do all the things that you're used to doing from a, a SQL standpoint, run ad hoc SQL queries, uh, and so on. Uh, and we have some patent pending technology around that adaptive query execution where we actually split the query uh, from uh, between the, the, both the relational and non-relational components of our system, uh, depending on what's most efficient for processing of that data. And then at the base layer, we have this hybrid storage engine where essentially we've combined both relational and non-relational data storage uh, to allow you to work with both structured and unstructured data. And the result, uh, comparing to Hadoop, uh, is a, a tremendous performance boost when working with structured data. Uh, so Hadoop, again, good with unstructured data today. With Hadapt, you can now use all of your structured data, uh, your typical sort of data warehousing types of analytics and, and those kinds of activities on uh, the Hadoop platform. So on, on uh, slide eight, we're, we're showing some relative performance here between the two systems, or, or three systems here, actually, uh, Hadapt. Uh, Hadoop with HDFS uh, running underneath and Hive, and also Hadoop and HBase. And what you'll see is that Hadapt is dramatically faster, and the reason for that is, again, this, this hybrid storage engine, where we can store that relational data in a relational tables using all the benefits of relational databases, indexing, and so on, and that allows a dramatic performance boost on uh, structured uh, queries. Uh, in fact, on average, we're almost 50 times faster than Hadoop and Hive, uh, and we're almost uh, over 600 times faster, actually, than, than HBase, which is really good for short queries, but not good for these kinds of typical data warehousing queries. So for a current Hadoop user, this is uh, a, a tremendous performance boost, and also, again, the addition of a more robust SQL interface that they can start to tie into uh, business intelligence tools. So on slide nine, you know, really the big picture vision here of what we're trying to do is, is really expand the opportunities for Hadoop uh, within the analytical uh, sort of market. And, and really today it's focused heavily on that unstructured data analysis, and it's used primarily by highly technical individuals, um, people that know how to write MapReduce jobs, for example, people that know how to tune Hadoop and understand it. Um, but what we'd really like to do is expand that capability, uh, expand uh, the utility of Hadoop to a much broader set of the market, really people that are working today on traditional structured data analytics. Uh, and also people that are business analysts, people that, that know SQL but don't know MapReduce, or people that don't even necessarily know SQL but understand how to use business intelligence tools. 
uh, and really expanding the uh, the reach of of Hadoop and all the benefits that it provides. You know, we really think that the future here, the future uh, of Hadoop, is that it can be the database, the uh, enterprise data warehouse of the future, uh, and that's what we find pretty exciting. Um, on slide ten. <clears throat> I just want to say that HADAP's unique approach is particularly suited for, uh, for a few uh, categories here. Uh, first of all, if you're a current Hadoop user, uh, and maybe you're using Hive today to run SQL queries on top of Hadoop, this is a way for you to get a, a better SQL interface and much faster query times. If performance is important to you, we're talking about reducing things from, from hour-long queries to minutes and, and minute-long queries to, to seconds. Uh, and that's a pretty uh, substantial improvement if, if you're running these complex, long-running queries. Um, the second benefit is uh, the ability to take these analytical applications that you may have running uh, in cloud environments and bring them into the cloud. Uh, that's, that's really uh, an important factor here is the, the benefit of this adaptive query execution to, to take your typical sort of analytical applications on both structured and unstructured data and move them into the cloud. Uh, and then the third piece is that uh, structured data applications uh, that you're working with today, uh, they might be sort of typical data warehousing solutions where you want to get a lower total cost of ownership and expand the scalability, uh, basically leveraging the benefits of Hadoop running on inexpensive commodity hardware. This is another uh, advantage for you. And then, then finally, the ability to work with both structured and unstructured data together in one platform, which, which we think has a whole host of emerging uh, use cases that are, are particularly relevant to, to businesses. So, you know, finally on the last slide, just to, to summarize, again, we've built this hybrid database architecture, really leveraging the benefits of, of Hadoop and relational databases, the ability to bring these kinds of analytical uh, tasks into a cloud environment with uh, this adaptive query execution that gives you consistent performance, uh, a, a SQL interface, MapReduce, and a JDBC connector, so you can tie into, again, all these sort of analytical applications that you're used to using uh, as a user, uh, a dramatic uh, performance boost on Hadoop and Hive, if you're a current Hadoop, Hive, uh, Hadoop user uh, using Hive, uh, and the ability to work with structured and unstructured data in one platform. Uh, and then finally, just to, to say, you know, we're emphasizing that, that we're creating a, a technology company here, a software company. Um, you, you know, we, we want to differentiate from some of the other um, uh, Hadoop providers out there that are uh, support and services companies. Um, you know, continue to use those for certain support and services. Um, they're, they're great companies out there. Uh, we're really focused on improving um, the, the technological benefits of of Hadoop, of the Hadoop platform, and really expanding its capabilities within the enterprise. Uh, so with that, you know, happy to take any questions. Sure, Justin. Thank you for uh, uh, sharing those slides with us. So uh, I had my first question was about competitors, right? This seems to be a, kind of a, a unique offering in that you're, you're selling bits, right? That's your primary business model. Is that correct? Uh, so, what do you mean by selling bits? Well, you're 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 selling software licenses for revenue, right? You're not like a service that's, engagement. That's correct. Okay. Okay. Correct. Correct. And um, as such, I mean, Hadoop is just out there, right? And people are cobbling together these other solutions. Who are your competitors? Do you think? Uh, that that's a great question. I, you know, we think that right now, today, I mean, our our only real competitors, perhaps Hive, which is this this open source project. Uh, created by the, the folks at, at Facebook, really, to, to deal with their own, um, you know, desire to perform SQL queries on top of Hadoop. So they built this this great tool, Hive, which is which is really the best thing out there today, and a lot of people are, are starting to use it to be able to do some of these kinds of more structured data analytics uh, on the Hadoop platform. And uh, and you know that's that's where we think. Uh, hopefully, some of the the, the low hanging fruit for us is for us uh, as we go to market, which is uh, you know finding Hadoop users who are working with with structured data today uh, using Hive and and offering them the ability to get uh, a better SQL interface and improve performance. Um, you know, but but truthfully, you know, to come back to your point, there there is nobody out there that's really doing exactly what we're doing uh, by combining these two uh, ecosystems. So you're you're brand new with this company. Have you been working with any uh, beta customers? Uh, we have, we have. We've been working with some folks in uh, both the web analytics space and the financial services space. Uh, nothing to announce today, but uh, as we get closer to the summer, I, I think we'll we'll have some some announcements there. Oh, terrific! Yeah, because I was going to ask you if there were any verticals that uh, seem to be uh, first targets for your company. 
Yeah, those are a couple that we're looking at. You know, Hadoop is is gaining such widespread adoption, I think, in, in a variety of different verticals that um, that we're exploring a lot of different interesting use cases. Um, but those are two that have jumped out at us uh, early, um, both uh, the financial services sector and and also again the web analytics space. Okay. And just just for uh, our listeners' information, how would an engagement look like? You know, somebody uh, ha- already has a, a database on uh, MySQL or something, and um, you know they would come to you. And, and how would that engagement? What would that look like? You know, would you have to come in there, look at what they got, and have your engineers uh, do some testing? What do you, how is that, how does that look? Yeah, great question. So in the early goings, you know, we'll probably be more uh, hands-on with, with our customers. Uh, you know, we have a couple folks that we're kind of working with today with, with an alpha version of the product, and, and certainly we want to, um, you know, help people uh, get the most out of the product. So, so we would probably come in and see, you know, what your data size is, what types of queries you're doing, uh, and then construct a system for you. One of the benefits of uh, of our uh, sort of hybrid storage engine is we're actually database agnostic in terms of what relational storage engine we use. So, so it could be that in in the case that you mentioned, maybe you you do have a, a single node or or even a sharded uh, MySQL uh, implementation that you're that you're using for your analytics, and, and you're not really happy with the performance and the, the complexity of scaling that and, and so on. Um, we could we could continue to use. Uh, MySQL, which means you need literally no changes to your to your schema and and so on, uh, and we can bring that into uh, the Hadap platform. Uh, so we can we can provide that sort of infinite scalability that Hadoop provides and make your your MySQL um, uh, implementation Hadoopy, if you will. Um, so so that's one way we can certainly go. Uh, you know, if you're not using uh, Hadoop today, or you're not using, um, you know, if you're using uh, appliances, for example, today for your your data warehousing activities, we can come in uh, and uh, and just you know build you sort of the, the whole system from the ground up. Uh, we again, like I said, we're flexible in what kind of uh, storage engine we put in there. You know, we've used Postgres, we've used some some column store databases. Uh, it sort of depends on on the needs of the customers and, and what type of storage engine they would like. Well, this sounds really exciting. Um, I can hear the passion you have for this in your voice, and uh, I wish you the best with with Hadapt. And uh, you know, I'd really like to check back in with you in maybe six months and see uh, how it's going. Does that sound good? Yeah, absolutely. We'd we'd love to do that. Sounds good. Okay, Justin. Well, thank you for coming on the Rich Report today. Stay tuned, folks, for more news and information on high performance computing.